So you are sponsored by Liquid Death? No. Oh, no? Come on, man. <laughs> Wouldn't that be cool, though? You know what? We did a little bit of stuff for him for a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With like the Red Up team. I was like, gonna get us hooked up with Liquid Death, and they sent me a few cases. Oh, shit. Yeah. Like, and then how, what was that process like? I just emailed them, and I was like, this is before they kind of blew up. This is oh, like. Okay, okay, so it's just like a cold email. Yeah, yeah. And I was yeah. like, I was like, hey, you know, because I just happened to like read some of their, like, I just went on their website and was reading them. I was like, this stuff's funny as hell. Yeah. But, like, this is kind of cool. And, I love you the know, company, man. I think it's Yeah, the their marketing artists. and stuff's awesome. Oh, it's the best. Dude. So I like emailed them, and I was like, hey, I really like your stuff. You know, like, I'm the team manager for the skate team. And we do events and stuff like that. You know, I'd like to do stuff with you guys and yeah. kind of promote for you guys. So they sent me a couple of cases, and I was giving them out like at events and stuff like that. And then they just kind of ghosted me. They quit responding to emails. Uh, and they quit, they like, got too big for you. Like, I, mean, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what it was. I even sent them like pictures and you know and videos and stuff and, like you know us like promoting them and stuff like that. They just I don't know. It's just fuckers. But from what I hear, like uh, I, I think they're kind of known for that. Like a couple of other oh, people no did way. the same thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think the guys from like Super Eight, like Super Eight Skateboard, mm-hmm. like same thing happened with them and stuff too. So it's mm-hmm. kind of shit. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they've blown up though. I mean, that they have in the past couple of years. Walmart now, dude. I saw it in Walmart. Today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the the bar I always go to, like I always go see shows at. They have it, you know. Yeah, like yeah. that's what I drink there, you know, when I go there and all that. So, but yeah. it is kind of hard to push it, dude, because honestly. 20 bucks for a 12 pack of water dude so <laughs> yeah i mean it is because it has a cool can you know, it is kind of hard to push but. it's rough <laughs> but it's cool i don't know if you want to wear headphones i, I usually don't wear headphones man uh no I'm pretty I don't, close, I don't, yeah it's all good too. but i don't do intros or nothing man we're already recording so so i don't like the guest mics i have at our studio you have to pretty much fucking eat the mic to, you know, <laughs> get it to hear. I don't know yeah. if your mics are like that. Yeah, okay, so it's like good. We were just talking about it. The, the video he's editing now is my homie Flacco, and he was sitting, like, way back here. Like, uh-huh. and it picked it up just fine, so you're good, dude. Right on. But, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Can I turn that TV off? That's yeah, yeah. Yeah, now I got a little milk, too. Spill water on. I saw that video, you just got your hair did recently. Well, that's actually old, dude. It's <laughs> oh, really? Like, yeah, it's, is it? It's like a month old. Uh, yeah, yeah, Kenzie does it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right on. <laughs> Content, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. But anyway, what's up, guys? What's up with that? We got E Dub here. What's Mr. Up? Kick Push Radio himself. What's yeah. going on, brother? How you doing? I'm doing good. Yeah. I'm doing good. How are you? I'm good, man. Thanks for coming down, dude. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah. It's it's dope, man, because you were like one of the the first kind of people to like reach out, mm-hmm. kind of be like, hey, I fuck with what you're doing. Yeah, and that's cool, man. So yeah, yeah. I had to have you come on. I mean, you guys are kind of doing the same thing, you know. A little, like, yeah, it's similar. It's what you, you know. Doing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm just. I'm doing it over the radio, and I'm kind of more, you know, music focused. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm kind of bringing music and skateboarding together, you know. But you guys, you know, we're doing the podcast. You know, I have a bunch of local, like local music, local skateboarders, right, stuff right. like that. So no, I love what you're doing, though, man. The whole thank you. The whole like skate videos and like mm-hmm. getting the songs from them and stuff and yeah. putting them on a pedestal for a minute, dude. It, yeah. It, I felt like we needed a radio station like that for so long. Yeah. Because skate videos have like. There's so many songs that I know just from skate videos. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. You'll like, I'll do that too. You'll be like, listen to radio and listen to something and a song will come on. You go, holy crap. That was like Mark Johnson's part in Fully right. Flared. Yeah. You know? yeah. Like, and that's kind of what started it, you know, because I've always been such a nerd about that. Right. Like, you know, I'm a skater nerd, you know, and I'm a music nerd. So it's kind of like the two go together. It's, oh, like, I think it's, like, per- it's, like, it's a great <laughs> idea. Yeah. Yeah. How did that come about with you getting in there with KLN like that? Um, so it's, it's all because of my sister, my younger sister, right? She has a show. Well, so it started out, she had a show. She was a guest host on the rockabilly review on like Tuesday nights okay, yeah, on their yeah. FM side. on right. KNON. So recently KNON started their streaming service. Right. And so that, that's brand new. Like KNON streaming service it just started like in February mm-hmm. or something like that. So it's brand new. So my little sister, uh, she started, I mean, she was guest hosting on the rockabilly review right and then she kind of left that show and then she's been writing uh, music articles and music columns for hot rod magazine like the rockabilly like hot rod stuff you know yeah, and cool. her music column it's called rock and roll high school 
and she writes about like rock and roll history and music. Yeah, and stuff like you, that. you had her on your, your show a while back, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah she was right. on my show. I didn't yeah, know she was your sister. Yeah, yeah, that's my sister. <laughs> so her name's Jamie Brains. You know, like yeah, shout out. Yeah, Jamie Brains. Hi, Jamie Brains. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, she started writing that music column for the for the magazine, okay. and then the uh, station managers for KNON uh, hit her up, and they were like, "Hey, we like what you're doing with the magazine, and we loved your voice. Why don't you come back on and have your own show doing that stuff based off your magazine nice. articles?" So she came in, and now she has her own show every Saturday. This is a plug for you, Jamie Brains. Saturdays, KNON now. 12 to 8, I'm sorry, 12 to 2 p.m. Kano and Now, Rock and Roll High School. Um, so it's like basically a radio show based off the, the you know, magazine called She Was Right. Yeah. She does like music history, um, rock and roll history. Like she plays a lot of rockabilly and stuff like that. So uh, one day she was like, she was like, hey, why don't you come on the show? Like kind of hang out with me one Saturday. This was like her second or third show she did. Okay. Um, she was like, let's talk about like punk rock, or, like skate music, you know, oh, skateboarding yeah. music and history of like punk rock and skateboarding, how it all goes together. So I was like, all right, cool. So like we got some stuff together. Uh, I sent her a couple of songs, you know, from like the faction, like Steve Caballero's band. Yeah, yeah. Um, we played some Dead Note Men, you know, some Dead Kennedys, you right. know, just, you know, the stuff you would always hear in skate videos, you know, back, back in the days. And so uh, we did that, and I did that show with her that day, and she was like, you know what, you should have your own show, you should do this. And I'm like, all right, that, yeah. maybe. I, I was like, I don't know, it's kind of cool, it'd be fun. And so she emailed the station manager and was like, hey, you know, my brother does this, you know, he's involved with like the local skate scene, and then he does this, um, you know, he should have his own show. Oh, and then yeah. she had me fill out this little application, and I made like a little mock playlist, right. of, like stuff I'd play on the show, and I sent it to him, and the station manager called me up. He was like, hey, I don't want you to come and talk to me, you know, and like, let's go through this, you know, see what I think. Yeah. So I was like, okay. And still, at that point, I was still like, whatever. I was still kind of like half-assed. Like, yeah, it's yeah. not going to happen. I feel the you same know, way. This is going to be fun. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, I, I went up there, and I had an interview with the station manager. And he was like, at first he was like kind of like playing with me. He was like, yeah, that sounds like kind of a cool idea. And he was like, but you know, you realize we're like a music, you know, station. We're not like talk. I was like, oh, you know, I'm not trying to do like a talk show. I want to do music. Yeah. I want to play music from skate videos, have local bands, local skaters, like have that, and, like all that, just play music. And so he was like, mm, and I, in my head, I was like, yeah, he's not going for it, yeah. like whatever. And then it's like, he just pulls out this book. It was like, um, it was like, hey, um, okay, so, you know, I think we should do your show on Monday nights from six to eight and all that. And I was like, whoa. Wait, what? <laughs> just like that. Yeah. Yeah. He was just like, all right, we're going to schedule your show this one. Do it. Oh, do you have a show? I was like, uh, not... okay, yeah, really? I, 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 I was okay, like, this yeah. is happening? Like, uh. That's sick, man. So you just kind of stumbled into that. Yeah, yeah. It just kind of, it just kind of happened. And I mean, it's, it's just kind of flowed from there. And I mean, yeah. I've, I've had some good feedback. Um, I don't know exactly how many people are listening because it's streaming. Yeah. They don't really provide me like every week with like, you had this many listeners oh, or that, that many listeners. It doesn't. There's it doesn't. gotta be some analytics out there. Somewhere. I mean, there is. They can find it. Yeah. It's just on one hand, like you know, like I want to know, you know, like how many people are listening and if they're listening. But on the other hand, you know, I'd like, I think I'd be kind of bummed if I found out there's like two people right, listening. Right. You know, so I don't know if I really want to know. Honestly, it was like whatever. I just I do what you. I do. You know. I feel you on that, man. Even uh, when I had people on the show, uh, I had uh, a couple of guys from Pushfoot. Um, skateboards yeah, or yeah. fuse wheels on a couple of weeks ago and those guys were like dude like I can't believe how laid back and easy this was I was like man I'm not trying to do some crazy like you right. stuff I just when I bring people on I want people just to hang out it's like right. people hanging out you know talking about skate videos and listening to music yeah I'll try and book some so, people and they'll just be like well I, I, mean, I, I don't know I'm not really good with that I'm only on camera and I'm just like man I'm just, yeah. just any other conversation like you would yeah yeah, yeah. I mean even right now it's like that doesn't exist over there. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just like just hanging block, out with you. you know, like, uh, out right yeah. <laughs> but yeah Everyone's all see Jake. Jake's sitting over there. Like, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so there. <laughs> <laughs> That's sick though, man. That's like a like a honestly like a dream job to me because like, I've always wanted to be on like the radio. You know, here we are. It's fun. I'm in front of my face right now, but I've always wanted to be on the radio like that and like to do it in like a skateboarding fashion like that. Yeah. And, like I said, putting it on the pedestal, showing it to people like that, because it, it needed to be done, honestly. It, it just kind of happened. Like, yeah. and I just had that idea, it just like came out of nowhere. It's like, you know, because there's, I've 
some of the bands I've found and some of the music I've listened to mm-hmm. heavily influenced by skateboarding, Absolutely. by skate oh, videos yeah, and all that. I'm so the same. yeah, I found so many good bands. Like, mm-hmm. uh, so I started skateboarding when I was like. 11, 12 years old, okay. and uh, and back then, you know, like back in the day, back in my days, yeah. like back in the days, a lot of people like because I started skating in the late eighties, early nineties, and everything. And back then, the Dinosaur Junior was like in every skate mm. video, and still to this day, ever since I was twelve years old, Dinosaur Junior is still one of my favorite bands. Oh, yeah. So you know, it's like I just kind of I want to spread that influence, you know, and like show that influence, and you know, kind of. Some of those unknown bands, you know, stuff yeah. that you may not have heard of. And Kano, Kano yeah. has always been on that kind of edge of right. like the new shit around. And yeah. they, they play yeah. that stuff that's not really on everything else, too. Because exactly. I, I've been listening to them since, like, man, it's been like 10, 12 years I've been listening to Kano, man. Like, yeah, I grew I, up on Kano. I'm telling you, dude, yeah. I, I, got a, I got into, like, Saturday nights that used to play, like, heavy metal. Yeah, like, I remember that. Heavy yeah. shit, dude. And I, 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 I got so many bands do that. Yeah. Man. I don't know. I, mean, I think it's sick as hell that they're doing what you're doing now. Yeah, it's awesome. I mean, and uh, with the streaming service, I can get away with a little more. You know, it's not on the FM side, it's on the streaming side. Yeah, yeah. And it's also cool, it's like, I can go, I can reach, like, further. You know, like, it's not just local Dallas, Fort Worth, you know, with just the FM side. I'm, I'm, you can stream from anywhere. Like, How does that work as far as, like, licensing, copyright, you're just free? Because we're a nonprofit. Know? We're nonprofit and mm-hmm. we don't advertise. We don't have advertisers. We don't have commercials. So you can pull from we anywhere. Like that. I can pull from anywhere. You know, That's so cool. Like, yeah. I was wondering yeah. that when I was listening to it the other day. Yeah. I'm like, man, how are they getting away with that? Yeah, 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 yeah. We can pull from anywhere. And That's all that. sick. Because it's, it's like I said, because it's a nonprofit yeah. and everything like that. So it is different than your typical like terrestrial radio. You know? Yeah, because usually you've just got to bank of songs to, that you right. can only play. You know? Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. I, they tell me to play whatever. That's so the cool. only thing I can't do, like, like Facebook Live, you know, or live mm-hmm. streaming during the show, I can't do that because of the music rights and stuff like that. that but like sense. during the show, I can. Yeah. I can play whatever I want. So that's tight. So yeah. tell me about man, uh, Edo Skate Co. Man, and you got mm-hmm. the club distribution behind you. And yeah, let's let's get into that a little bit. So Edubs, um, I started Edubs. Uh, I started kind of back in 2015, 2016. Okay. Uh, I started making skateboard rides. So it kind of started with a collaboration with my friend Brandon. Brandon Sneed, he owns Red F Skateboards. Okay. Um, Brandon and I have known each other since we were like eight years old. I mean, before that, we like went to kindergarten together. And, you know, like we grew up together. We grew up skateboarding together, you know. And back in the days in the late 90s, him and I were sponsored by this shop, um, this old shop back in the 90s, you know. And like, you know, we grew up. a local them. shop. Yeah, yeah, like a local shop. And okay. we were doing stuff together. So he, um, fast forward like years later, we grew up like whatever, we kind of go our separate ways a little bit, but uh, he's a computer programmer and he's always been into that stuff ever since we were in high school. So right, he kind of right. blew up with that and he got a job for like Apple, you know, like one of their head developers for Apple making those That's apps. Cool. Yeah. yeah, so he kind of blew up with that. And then, you know, he's, always, he's a skate nerd, you know, he's always been a skate nerd. So he's like, I'm gonna start my own skateboard company. Yeah. So he started Red Out Skateboards. And so, you know, him and I started collaborating a little bit with that. And I was like, dude, I want to do something. What can I do? So I was like, man, I can make some wax, you know, I can make some skate wax. And so I started like toying with different formulas, you know, and like, you know, like different trying different formulas? things. Yeah, different wax formulas okay. and stuff like that. Cause, cause I was like, you know, some of the crappy wax you buy, in, I mean, no offense to some of the wax, <laughs> some of the wax you buy in skate shops, but some of that stuff, I'm thinking back like the, I don't know if you ever had any of the old World Industries wax. Yeah. That was a little cheesy like Flamehead guys. Yeah. That wax sucked, dude. Yeah, it's horrible. Like you would like try it's to so wax sick. the curb and it would start flaking off right, and it was right. like break. I was like, I don't want that. And and we're in Texas, you know, it gets hot. Like during the summer, sometimes you wax a ledge in a curb and it just melts right off. Yeah, right? And it's so, just dripping down the side of it. I was kind of trying to like go after that. Like, what can I do? So I started mixing some different formulas and. And I started doing it in my garage, and I'm sure my neighbors thought I was like making meth or something. Right. Like, because I had all these boiler pods and, and like yeah. all those different like chemicals and colors and like uh, like mad scientists yeah, yeah. in there. So uh, yeah, so I just started making wax, and um, I just when I first did it, I just made these cheesy little rectangular blocks, you know, and it was okay. just kind of cheesy. But I found this rad formula I made. I mean, without giving too many trade secret secrets. Uh, I, was, I kind of made a little formula made with beeswax and paraffin wax and like okay. vegetable oil and you know, a couple other things. Right so like I got it down to where, 
you know, it melts well on the ledge, but it doesn't like melt off and it's not too crusty and it's kind of, it's not greasy, yeah. you know, it's just like, it's just slick. I mean, so you stuff, went out there with some trial and error? I did, I did. I worked work. really hard on this. That's yeah, cool. I tried a bunch of different things, you right. know, like and all that. So I did that and um, at the time, you know, not trying to get too much personal crap, but at the time I was married, you know, mm -hmm. to this, to this chick. And then uh, things kind of fell apart, like at her one year anniversary, I found out like she had been cheating on me on this stuff. So I kind of like, kind of had the bell on that. And with that, I kind of like started the bell on the skate wax stuff. And I was just kind of half-assed doing it. Yeah. And I was just, honestly, I was just drinking a lot. You know, I was just like staying drunk all the time. And then uh, then I had a heart attack, like a couple months later. And got down. Yeah, I had like a 99% a blockage in my main artery. I had a heart attack. I had Jeez. to get like surgery and get a stint and stuff like that. that. So you have a stint now. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's the kind of dissolved because this was 2018 when I had the heart attack. Wow. Yeah. So I mean, that's the stint's like pretty much you know dissolved, like gone. I mean, yeah. it's still there, but gone. You know what I mean? It's wild. So, uh, so I, I kind of after that, you know, I was like still drinking a lot and stuff like that. So I still like. I had the wax stuff, but I wasn't really serious about it. You know, really wasn't doing anything until about 2019 when I was kind of like, you know, like, holy crap, you know, I need to really get back into this and start doing something, you know? And um, so I kind of really started doing it and I started making different shapes and I started different things and it kind of blew up a little bit. And I started making wax, custom wax for different people, different companies. Yeah. Like uh, Laid Out Magazine, I mean, I heard Laid Out Magazine yeah, yeah. in Houston. Okay. Uh, I collaborated with them and I made a bunch of wax for them and we did like a bunch of collab stuff for like Halloween and he did this big huge event out at the Houston skate park okay. and I made this like candy corn looking wax. Yeah, yeah. It was like in the color candy corn, like orange, yellow, and black. That's tight. You know, and I was like making wax for him and all that and it kind of blew up from yeah. there. And then uh, fast forward a little bit more and then COVID hit, you know, and then uh, you know, it was kind of like working, started working from home and I started doing a lot of stuff and I was talking to my friend Brandon from Red F, he started to expand a little bit, you know, with his stuff. And I was like, dude, I'm just kind of making wax, but I feel like I could be doing something else, you yeah. know, like I want to do more with this, you know, like I don't want to just be making wax, so yeah. what else can I do? Yeah. So we kind of expanded a little bit. I started doing hardware, like hardware packs, and then we started doing bearings. I have E-dubs bearings. What's the process of getting like hardware packs? So you just mm -hmm. literally go into the hardware store and pick it up? Well, we have a distributor that I use. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I buy the hardware gotcha. packs. And so... I kind of skipped over some little stuff. So my skateboard company, I didn't just make, you know, just like a standard skateboard company. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to make like an old school company, like old school stuff, like okay. kind of a tribute to early 90s and stuff like that, right? Yeah, yeah. So the hardware packs I'm making, they're hardware for like shape decks and old, old oh, school right packs. Okay. So the hardware, they're a little bit longer and they come with riser packs. Yeah. So it's like all in one pack with a little bit, you know, cheaper of a price, I guess, you know, if you would have to buy separately. So we were kind of geared towards that and so that and then we found some a good distributor for bearings and so i started making the e-dub sixers yeah um, i saw that that's, that's pretty cool i should have i didn't even think about it i should have brought you some my bad i fell <laughs> but the e-dub sixers you know they're the instead of the standard seven ball mm -hmm. bearings that you have you know your typical like bones ribs and stuff yeah, like yeah. that they're the bigger six balls and they have a little bit bigger of a gap in between the balls so that's a little bit less friction yeah. you know in your bearings and it kind of lift allows you to spin a little yeah, bit like so, out, man. so yeah i'll bring yeah. next time i'll bring you some okay. I'll, okay. I'll bring you some <laughs> i think that's cool as hell man yeah like uh, like candle wax is always the best to me yeah you know, yeah you go or, like the, like or the gulf wax you know, like the gulf wax you oh, buy yeah, at the yeah. grocery store and stuff like i always i was always cool with just getting like a a little dollar store yeah well i mean even though it's gonna start flaking off you know oh like, for sure for yeah. sure but but it, I'm, I'm, I was there's something kidding. with like if you go and buy like wax from the skate shop it's always a little bit better and like you said it doesn't flake yeah. and shit and won't melt and so yeah i think it's kind of there's another company that does like uh double cups and wax and stuff i forgot their name but anyway i think it's that's pretty cool man. yeah so tell me about um, Pepperoni Boys, man. Uh, oh, Pepperoni Boys? Yeah. So, uh, I was checking out that music video today. And it looks like you shot uh, it at Plano Park. Yeah, yeah. Most yeah. of it was at Plano Park. That was actually shot by my friend Anthony. That he does Slid Roll. Yeah, he yeah. He has Slid Roll channel on YouTube. Yeah. Um, so they're a friend of his. That They all grew up together. They all went to, like, Wiley High School together. Yeah. And, like, grew up in Wiley. And so they're his friends. And um, 
they did that. They wrote that song about skateboarding. You know about yeah, it's like a skateboarding. love story. Skateboarding. It, is, it is. It's cool as hell. Yeah. And so Anthony, like doing Slidro, he wanted to do a video for it. So he asked me to like, you know, just be the star in there because right. Anthony now have we've done a few things together. Because if you go on the Slidro channel, there are a few videos yeah, I've seen you on there and all that. Yeah. Um, so you because, just kinda, uh, you're like a reoccurring person on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, Anthony and I do a lot of stuff together. Okay, cool. You know, and stuff because. Uh, we're, we're almost at like yin and yang with Anthony and I. Anthony's like, you know, Anthony, if you're watching this, I'm sorry, I'm going to call this out. <laughs> Anthony's kind of a little more like kind of straight lays, kind of like, you know, okay. you're you know good boy. Me, I don't give a shit. I don't give a fuck. Like, I'm just no, like, I, I don't care. Yeah, yeah, I'll make an ass of myself. I can give two shits left. Yeah. You know, so like I'm a little bit funnier, so he, I think that's why he likes to have me in his videos. Oh, and stuff. yeah, he said he was funnier. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Anthony, love you. <laughs> Not that I'm funnier, I just I don't care, I don't have a shit, you know, I'm just like whatever, you know. So, mm -hmm. so he asked me to be in that video for him to shoot for the pepperoni boys, you know, yeah, it's cool. kind of like it, it's like the whole video premise is like me being on a date with somebody, but you know, sort of like you know like a date with like a girl or something i'm at a date with my skateboard the whole time so throughout the video i'm just like you know like in date scenarios and making googly yeah, eyes on yeah, my yeah. skateboard and stuff like that yeah. it's, it's a cool little video yeah. I, I dig it. it it's funny yeah. and there's some parts on there where i'm like on top of the ramp where i'm like acting like i'm playing a guitar yeah. and you can see somebody like come under me and do like this big front side 5-0 yeah. that's my boy binky oh, okay y'all know, you know binky he lives out in rockwall out there he has a big <laughs> mini ramp and stuff out there and uh you know, yeah, he's one of the locals. Oh, dude, he rips. Yeah. The guy rips. He he rides a lot of shape decks and like old school boards. I love that. And when I get, because I'm in the process right now of having my new boards come out, because mm -hmm. my all my boards are shape decks for e dubs. I don't have any like popsicles. And I uh, already got the graphics laid out. I'm just waiting for the wood to be cut. Okay. And um, I want to put somebody on my team, a rider. And I'm looking at Binky. I'm like, Binky, if you're watching this, you know. Because yeah. that dude shreds, man. He's really good. Like I said, he, I he shreds on him. You check him out. It's, yeah. it's B E N K E on Instagram. Okay. I think that's his follow. Yeah. Uh, shout out to What's up, man? Yeah, yeah. Check him. He's he's good. He okay. like man, really there's strong. so many people up and coming in Dallas right now. Skating. Really, there is. I heard somebody say once Dallas is like the new California. You, you think know, so? Like as far as like you know the locals and because we have so many big locals coming they out. They really are. Like dude. Dion. Um, Keyshawn? Keyshawn? Yeah, like I mean, so Keyshawn many is, locals coming He's out. putting on for Dallas like yeah. nobody else Gage, right now. Gage, Gage yeah. Dozier, yeah. Uh, Zach, Zach Pinkerton, yeah. like all these the guys. Oh my God. It, dude. Seriously. Every time I catch him at four down, he's just <sighs> leagues yeah. above everybody. He has else. the best tree flips on transition. It's so Little tree flips when his back foot floats out, like mm -hmm. when he catches it. Yeah. Oh my God. I'm going to put one of those in here. <laughs> yeah. Wait, did you sure. go to the four down experience they just had? No, I did not. I didn't get to go to that. And that's what another reason why it's taken me so long to come on this show because mm -hmm. I recently had a, some car problems, some oh, okay. problems. So and then like, well, because I live all the way out in the country. I live out in Boise, yeah, like out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. So you know, without a car, it's kind of hard to get around sometimes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I used to live way out there in West Washington. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. No way. Yeah. yeah. Place, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> It's out there. Yeah, I, I hated it out there. We can't even skate anywhere out there, man. But shit, uh, let me just ask you a couple questions, man. Just, yeah, for just, sure. Uh, random ass questions, I guess. Yeah. What have you learned since doing the show? Has there been any like thing that you've learned since doing this show with KLN? Um, what I've learned, man, that's a really good question. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't say so much what I've learned. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry. <coughs> what I've learned but uh, I don't know it, it has opened me up to a little bit for a lot of new local bands like a lot of you know, oh, okay. local unheard, unheard bands yeah. that I've never heard of before I mean because I've ha had some people message me you know send me their stuff and send me some music and oh, you know sure. and all this and it's kind of opened me up to a whole different stuff so I I guess if you could say I've learned anything I'm taking away I mean I've learned that there's there's a lot of stuff out there that you just don't know about. So you know, many, there's so many bands. There. I had a so many good stuff. Ray from Boop was here last night. Oh my gosh, she was just kicking it with Kenzie. They were just hanging yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. Oh gonna, my god, I'm gonna try and have them. I saw on. her Sunday night. I yeah, saw yeah. They were three weeks. Yeah, she said you were there. Yeah. Oh my god. Dude. I'm gonna, I, I got a show at Ray's on Friday. I'm gonna try and go check out. But yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I was blown away. Yeah, like Boop, they're yeah. they're going somewhere. That's what I told her. Like after they played, I was like, as soon as you record something, send it to me. I'm playing it on the show, yeah, and yeah. I want to have you guys in. I'm Absolutely, to you, but they're they're 
I mean, because I hate to say it, a lot of punk bands and a lot of bands you see coming out, they sound exactly like somebody else. Of course. Like a copycat of something, yeah. the booth. I've never seen or heard anything like it. I blew it away. And Ray, like on bass, pain, I'm a bass player. Okay. And I know playing bass yeah. and singing vocals at the same time, that's hard. It's really hard. Yeah. And like seeing her doing it and jump around and like all over the place, dude, I was just like, damn. Yeah, I can't wait to go see them Friday. It's going to be sick. Yeah, they're good. Yeah. They're good. Like, like Booth, like seriously, keep an eye on them. I love their they name too, man. Yeah, it's just it's Booth. One big butt joke. <laughs> and they were, she was talking about that because another band they, uh, that played was The Butts. Yeah. And it was Booth, The Butts from Parts Unknown. From Parts Unknown. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And Bullet Machine was the only one that kind of didn't fit that butt joke. You yeah. Know? But like every band was a butt joke. The whole set list is just one big butt joke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a fun show, like Sunday night at Three Weeks. Uh, Except for Parts Unknown, Bullet Machine, yeah. Booth the Butts. Like, all those bands I play on my show. Like, I play on the radio show. Oh, no shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, it was kind of, it's kind of cool seeing those guys, you yeah. know. And, and um, I, I, every show, I, I try to do, like, a spotlight from local bands mm -hmm. where I play a few songs from, like, that band I'm spotlighting. Right. And uh, Bullet Machine, one of the bands that played, um, they're going to be a spotlight on the show, you know, pretty soon, I think, okay. in July, like, one of the next shows. Who else you got coming on? Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Next Monday, our next show, we're going to have our band, uh, one of our local bands, Morocco. Okay. Um, the guy, the drummer, and I guess drummer singer from Morocco, he was formerly of uh, the Dalai Lamas, his name's Forrest Cook. Okay. He skates, you know, I've skated with him a few times. Um, actually, his son skates, too. I've skated with him and his son. It's a family you know? affair. Yeah, it's like a family <laughs> thing. So he's a good friend of mine. You know, he, uh, his last band, the Dalai Lamas, they played a big show with Agent Orange. You know, Agent Orange is yeah. a big skate punk band from the 80s, yeah. you know. And I actually, I worked his merch table for him at that nice. show. It was at Trees. It was a few years ago. But they're going to be on our next show next week. So mm -hmm. we're going to be playing their stuff and kind of do an interview, you know, thing like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, after that, uh, the next show after that, we're going to have the guys from Scoochie Skateboards. Nice. They're going to come in. Uh, we're going to talk to them. And Spotlight is a band out of San Antonio, of Thea. Uh, they're really good. They're an uh, all female band. Oh my god, they blow me away. They're a punk band. Yeah, they're oh, a punk sorry, band. Sorry. Yeah, they're a punk band. Again, out of San Antonio. Uh, my old band, um, if you know Jen Zuki, you know, she was part of the, the girl gang and yeah, stuff yeah. like that with Skate Straight. Uh, I was in a band, a couple of bands with her. We played with Faya. Like, one of my first shows to play with them in Deep Ellen was with Faya. Oh, okay. And then we went out, they own a bar in San Antonio called Bang Bang Bar. And uh, we went out to their bar and like played that show out there, so oh, yeah. that's gonna be good. Um, Elijah Moore, you know Elijah Moore, oh, yeah. he's, he's coming July fourth. He's gonna great. be uh, on on our special July fourth show. That's great. He's man. Elijah's he's a local legend himself. Man. Oh yeah, yeah, he's a great guy. He's I mean, just like I, an amazing guy. Man, back when he was on the Reliance team, yeah, I've yeah. been watching him since then, dude. And I, I used to watch him like hide myself in yeah. the skate. You know what I'm saying? Like him, he, him and I go way back because. Really? Because uh, back in 2000, 2001, I was a team manager and manager for Fast Forward and Tommy's Mall. No way. And yeah, and Elijah skated for the Collin Creek Mall in yeah. Plano. Even though Fast Forward had its own team, yeah. each store had their own separate team too. So it was like, even though we're on the same team, we we're all kind of competing, you know? Like, yeah, yeah. And like, and those bastards even stole one of my riders from me once. <laughs> like this dude, Damien, I had like, oh, he was such a good skateboarder. He was, I got him on the... You know, I had him come over and got him on the Town East store, yeah. and then the fucking Plano store. Yeah, the Town East they, fast they stole it from me. Town East fast forward. <laughs> that's the first skate shop I ever went to. Like, no, yeah, I swear, dude. well, small world. There, because uh, I grew up in Mesquite. We had mm -hmm. back when I started, eighty eight, eighty nine. There was a little tiny skate shop in downtown Mesquite called Rat. Rat feet or not rat things. It was like rat ramps or something like that. Okay. They had like a like a ramp, like this metal ramp in the back of it. Right. And it was an old school downtown South Mesquite, you know. And then, yeah, and then right, right when I started, oh, dude, it was eighties. Yeah, okay, <laughs> yeah. 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 it was eighties. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, when I started skating, they closed down. <laughs> you know, they you know they didn't last very long. But yeah. but then I went to fast forward. That's where I got on my boards and stuff like that. But then I ended up ninety nine until like two thousand one ish or something. I was like the team manager of the for the Tommy store for a while, so. That's tight, and so a lot of business the next day. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, so he was over there at the Plano store in Concrete. Yeah. Um, a lot of good memories from that, and it's funny, uh, I was watching that episode with Kenny, when yeah. you had Kenny Hampton on, and you were talking about a lot of stuff, and it was, 
God, it was just like so many memories. It was like flashing back. That's how it was when I was talking to man. <laughs> yeah. We were just catching up because we hadn't yeah. seen each other in a long time. We were sat down and kept yeah. up, you know. And so yeah. when he would mention something, I was like, I forgot all about yeah, that I kept. I was doing that the like, entire oh time God. I was watching it. I was but doing that. he has like this skateboarding memory that yeah. is just like encyclopedic. And yeah. he can be like, oh, I remember this day I was kick flipping this down. And yeah. I'm like, dude, how do you remember yeah. all of this? Damn. And when you were talking about like One Love Skate Shop. Oh, yeah. Um, with Anthony and all those guys, mm-hmm. like I used to hang out with those guys. I have a funny story about Anthony actually, like from One Love. Yeah. Uh, so, at, at this one point, I was living off those apartments off like Thirty and Bass Pro, like what's now Bass Pro, yeah. like right there. And there's that janky gas station that's right there. You know? I know exactly what you're talking about. That, that really sketchy yeah, gas yeah. station. Yeah. So I was there one night, and Anthony pulled up with his girlfriend, like okay. in a car, and and then we ran into each other. We we're like, right. oh, what's up? You know, we we're like talking and hanging out in front of his car and this random dude comes out of the gas station and I guess he thought Anthony's car I thought I guess he thought it was his car and just gets in the car and oh, was like shit. doing a scratched lottery ticket and Anthony's girlfriend was in the passenger seat she was like freaking out like, yeah, who the hell and Anthony it? like ran over there and like at, like slammed open the door he was like dude what are you doing and, like this guy was like freaking out he was like my dog is in my car <laughs> <laughs> Well, I haven't even thought about that and like that story until I saw that episode. Dude, I, I love more love, man. That. that was like that was such a great that was a real skate shot. Yeah, yeah, like that, like that movie. Uh, what is it? Early what is it? Early nineties, nineties kids, or, 90, or mid nineties, mid nineties, mid nineties. What John Hill movie? Yeah, 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 yeah. When they were like showing, you know, inside the skate shop, yeah, you know, dude. and all that, and I was like, that's exactly what I was thinking of. Like yeah. one love, I or I was thinking of Chrome Skate Shop, and mm-hmm. you know, back in the days. And, walk in there and then there'd be skate videos yeah yeah i i rented skate videos from that place dude like, <laughs> oh really yeah, it was i remember that they he would rent like video run out shit yeah. and just leave like a phone number and yeah they'd be like all right man cool but yeah that was like the first place that was like the place to go you yeah know? that was like yeah. a legitimate street spot and it was right there by rowlett skate park yeah. so everyone would just like skate skate to it oh god yeah. that i remember that skate park uh when they first opened, I was talking to the guy that was the head of like the city, like the Parks and Rec for okay. Rowlett. And so uh, we did this big, we were helping them with that big grand opening event when uh, they were doing, you know, opened up the park. We donated, I got Fast Forward Corporate to donate a bunch of boards and boxes and like okay. all that stuff for the grand opening right, for nice. the Rowlett Park. And then um, the, that day that it was, they were going to have some big grand opening party and like all this stuff where we're going to throw out boards and all that. And that day, like my apartment got robbed. No <laughs> shit. Yeah. So I didn't end up going to that because I was dealing with the cops and all that. Oh but, my God. And then I heard somebody like totally like just broke his arm in half at that event, you know, and it was just like, it was, it was a bad day. <laughs> like, yeah. Bad event. And, uh, yeah, that's a fucked up turn of events. <laughs> yeah. It was really bad. And then I think like the next week or like some of uh, a couple of guys that, rode with us at fast forward that worked with us we tried to go skate the relic park it was like during the day in the middle of the week yeah. and um and i remember there because they were trying to charge like they were trying to charge like 10 bucks or something to go skate and we pulled up and we we're gonna skate and the guy from the parks and rec pulled up and said no you know y'all gotta pay money you know if you want to skate and i was like i was like you know dude like we were from fast it. forward i'm the one that got you all that right. free stuff all the free board i mean this was hundreds of dollars worth oh, of sure. and like I, you know like we kind of donated that he was like well, if you want to donate a few hundred dollars more to the city, you know, you can skate. We were, we were like, <laughs> fuck you, man. <laughs> we were like, uh, I don't think I ever went back. I, mean, yeah. I think I might have skated it once or twice after that. But yeah, I, I never really skated around the park that much. It, it was kind of one of those crappy, you know, prefab parks that, mm-hmm. like, it was just some company that, like, had never even seen a skateboard before. Yeah, right on ramps. We could, yeah, build skate parks. Yeah, yeah. Well, man, now we got Garland. It's a beauty. Oh god, that park is amazing. I haven't been oh yet, god. but everything I see, I'm just like. Yeah. I haven't skated it, yeah, but no, I've yeah. been there. Me and Anthony from Slid Row, okay. we went and did an episode there, nice. um, and just kind of filmed the whole thing and did a walk around and was kind oh, of showing okay. that. Dude, I mean, I, it's probably the biggest park we have, like in DFW. Nice. It's, it's the biggest, and like there is something for everybody, literally. Yeah. Like whether you just started skating yesterday or you've been skating for 20 years. Or something that's what Kenny was telling me he yeah. said it's the best yeah. park we have it is hands down it's the best park yeah transition street like bowls hips anything like yeah. anything you could possibly imagine is there big stuff small stuff like 
it's all there. It's a, it's an amazing park. I love that it's in Garland too. Man. Yeah, it's yeah. Just kind of centrally located. You can't get right. it too far. You yeah, know, all the way down. Everything the else is up north. Exactly. Like you know, McKinney, like Blue Frisco, Blue. Plano, all those parks are like all up north. Yeah, you know, we don't have anything out here yeah. except St. Francis. Like. <laughs> I, lo I love St. Francis though. I mean, right? that's that's my hood spot. Got a shout out St. Francis, like, shout out Lakeland. What's up, everybody? Yeah, no offense to anybody <laughs> like St. Francis, but come on, Dallas, it, it is be better than that. They just got lights after like ten plus years. They got lights now. Yeah. Oh damn, it's I didn't know like, that. There's like an awning and like uh -huh. lights, but oh wow, for a while it was a big piece of yeah. shit and like the fucking like the rails would get stolen every other month and then like <laughs> yeah. they yeah. replace it and then uh -huh. the fence got taken out after one time. So dude, it's. It's a shit show sometimes, but it's fun. <laughs> well, I mean, it's still a fun park, though. Oh, it yeah, is, but it is a piece of shit yeah. <laughs> at the same time, you know? I mean, it's just crazy to, like, city of Dallas, like Dallas, like, really? That's all you got? That's all you can do? Like, really? Yeah, it's kind of <laughs> a ghetto, too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, same with Rockwell, though, because Rockwell had the worst skate park. Yeah, that park was bad. It was horrible. Yeah. And that, that, that was my local park. Yeah, and that was kind of, it was almost just like the Rowlett part. The yeah, same people have built it. Exactly. But the thing about the Rockwell part, it was like on an incline mm -hmm. and like a hill. And like the really big ramps were like on the downside. Right, right. right. So you had to go uphill to yep. hit anything when you're coming back, you know. And not only that, and the ground was like. Yeah, it was like really chubby. Like asphalty, and asphalty, like yeah, basketball. Yeah. Yeah. But that mini ramp was good, though. I love that, that mini scene. ramp now, was that, good. That is, the, I love that mini ramp because it actually yeah. had like the. Had almost a little bit of vert to it. Yeah, it was like yeah. some some straight to it a little bit. And yeah. Yeah, it was it was a really good mini ramp. Yeah, I got broke off on that ramp a couple yeah. times. Yeah, <laughs> the, the little pyramid thing that was just like kind of like rounded, like yeah. like you, you couldn't even hit it. There yeah. was like it was way too tall and it was like rounded and the like the hubba parts were like really short and it was just like. Oh, dude, yeah. I, I'm sorry. That's, I mean, that's where I cut my teeth at though. That's where I fucking yeah. learned to skate and like. I, I was there a few times. Yeah. 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 I mean, uh, and I guess uh, the ending, I guess a bunch of kids got some sledgehammers and busted holes in all the ramps, and that's when the well, city got tore down. See, I thought it was bikes, because the bikes would come there, and they're too big for the park, and so when they would come up on the bank and come back down, their peg would go through the ramp. Oh, no, it was sledgehammers. You think so? Yeah, yeah, because I saw the aftermath. I mean, there was random holes everywhere. Really? And it was sledgehammers, yeah. you can tell. Yeah. One of my homies. Somebody just jacked it, messed it all up. That fucking sucks, up. dude. One of my homies, uh, Corey Fontana, will shout you out. I know you got that rail from Harry Myers in your garage, dude. What's up with Corey. it? <laughs> <laughs> One of those bikes, because Corey builds those bikes. Oh, you know Corey? Oh, yeah, I know Corey. Okay, yeah, yeah, I know yeah. Corey. Corey, you yeah. know you got the Harry Myers rail. What's yeah. up with it? <laughs> <laughs> I always follow Corey and see some of the bikes he builds. Yeah, like, he does some cool shit, yeah. man. He's, he's yeah. turning Harleys out like crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've known Corey a long time. He didn't go way back, dude. Uh, I used to stay at his house for a little while. Yeah. yeah. We used to work and put on, uh, uh, I guess, I guess it'd be roadies for like build in and build out for shows and stuff. And we'd do that yeah. in the middle of the night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then go skate like afterwards. Yeah, yeah. Downtown and shit. <laughs> yeah, Corey's my guy. Yeah, yeah, he's a good dude. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so tell me, are you are you in like a pretty carefree time in your life right now? I mean, you got the show going on, you got the skateboard company. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm just staying busy, yeah. you know, staying busy all the time, you know. I have two kids at home, you know, like, keep, I got two teenagers, you know, so they keep me super oh, busy. Yeah, and doing that, and with the skate stuff, you know, trying to pump out, you know, skate wax still, I kind mm -hmm. of fall behind on that, you know. And and um, and then the radio show, you know, and all that, it's, it keeps me busy, man. Oh, I'm sure. I'm busy constantly. How yeah. does the uh, time kind of go by for you? Did you experience time mm -hmm. in, in a pretty quick manner, or is it? Kind of drag yeah, yeah. On for you. Oh no, dude! It goes by way too fast. Yeah. There's not enough hours in the day, That's and I, I still feel. have my normal nine to five job. Too. Exactly. Dude. So I'm right there with you. Luckily, I'm you know still working from home. Mm -hmm. You know, ever since COVID, you know, we're still on a work from home basis. And honestly, I kind of dread like if we have to go back to the office because yeah, yeah. there's no way I'm going to be able to handle and juggle all this yeah, going back to the office. Yeah. Like that's the only way I am able to juggle this is because you know while I'm working from home, I can make wax or I can work on my show. Yeah. You know, and do stuff like this. Yeah, that's pretty beneficial. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Man, if I could stay home and just focus on this and my yeah. craft and stuff, man. Yeah. It would excel. Yeah. Quicker. Yeah. I mean, it is easier. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I just I'm just I'm just dreading that day they're they're gonna be like. All right, yeah, come on back to the office. Yep. Like, Damn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so time just kind of flies by for you, man. Me too, because I feel like sometimes I just don't have enough time in the day. And yeah. Every week is like that, and it's just 
quicker and quicker every day. Right. For sure, dude. Yeah, it happens. It's good. So, one question I like to ask everyone that comes on here is uh, do you have like a a signature sauce, Mm -hmm. flavor, uh, anything like that? What what would would your your sauce be? My signature sauce? Yeah. Uh, Do you have something that you can't live without or like, Uh, you know what I mean? Something you put on everything or just a flavor you like? Um, it's kind of it's kind of a weird mix of like sea salt, black pepper, garlic, and onion. Okay. I, I have I have different brands like yeah. I, I kind of rotate with that I try to find like Lari seasoning, you know, or like the Great Value seasoning is okay, good, okay. like the steak seasoning. I put that on everything like eggs, fries. Like if I make if I grill some steaks, yeah. like burgers, that's what I put on everything. That's like my go to yeah. sea salt, black pepper, garlic, especially like those. Like, that's an I think interesting that would, one. Be, that would be my flavor. Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> You caught me off guard with that question. Yeah, I was it, like, it, everyone's always like, what? What are you, never, never what even are thought about, about that. What are we talking about right now? Like, but it is, it's my one seasoning, you know, that I put on everything. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, let me ask you this. Uh, why do you think so many podcasts exist now? Why is it so popular and there's just so many popping up now? I know why I do mine. Mm-hmm. But I'm, why, why do you think there's so many just out now? It's technology, man. I mean, because, you know, it's, you're able to get out to the masses exactly. and reach other people now mm-hmm. versus even 10 years ago, <clears throat> this wasn't even possible. You know, like, I think people always have had these ideas, you know, and they've had these things. But but now that the technology exists, you know, it's easier to get out to more people and reach yeah. more people and stuff like that. Absolutely. So I, I think it's kind of cool. Like, if somebody has an idea like yours, you know, they want to get that out there because... There could be somebody in Ohio that doesn't even know you and just kind of strolling through YouTube and be like, what is this? And they'll check this out and be like, Dude, I really relate to these guys. Exactly. I love this. Yeah. Like, my daughter got me into this podcast called Mr. Ballin. Okay. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. No, I haven't heard that one. He, he does kind of like true crime stuff, okay. but he does just just his whole demeanor, the way he's like super laid back and it's kind of cool. It's like, it's like we're talking now, you yeah. know, like friends talk about, you know, and he just talks about not only true crime stuff, but he does like weird stuff, like weird, just kind of creepy, like, you know, yeah, yeah. stuff that you don't normally hear about, you know, and like, I, I'm like, I'm, I'm like, every time he puts out a new episode, like that day I'm watching it, you know. Like, Dude, I'm that's like, how I am with my podcast too. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm addicted. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. it's just, I mean, you have that interest in you, mm-hmm. you know, you have that thing and you don't, you might not even know it. You, that you know that interest could be in there and you never even do it right, until right. you see this podcast you know and this all that and you're like oh my god that's kind of my cool. people that's really <laughs> interesting yeah so I, I think that's kind of why it's so big now because we have the technology where we're able to do that for you know, sure to get yeah. out there so yeah, yeah. I don't know if that's a super generic answer you know but I don't think so. <laughs> no, I think just, everyone's got fucking podcasts now but I think that's a good that's a good assessment yeah it's, mm. it's just easier to do it now yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. Let's see what else we got here. Oh, Mr. Mike Crum. Yeah. Uh, he's like our. Uh, I'm, I'm just bringing him up as a fucking point. <laughs> Mike Crum, dude. He's like our. Uh, our uh, Dallas Tony Hawk. Oh yeah, you absolutely. Know what I mean? like, absolutely. He's like. You our, know he was supposed to be on Tony Hawk Pro Skater, right? Was he really? He was. I don't know the exact story on what happened, why he wasn't. I don't know if it was an injury. Yeah. Or something just happened. Didn't happen. But he was originally supposed to be on Tony Hawk's That's so skater. sick. So yeah. I, I watch Tony Hawk's podcast all the time, and they bring him mm-hmm. up every now and then. Oh, yeah. Talking about yeah, going Nine Club, more. they bring him up. Yeah. They talk about him a lot. Yeah. I'd love to see him go on. Yeah. Just, just go talk and, have, and kick it with him, man. I, yeah. I, I just want to see him in the mix again, you know? Like, yeah, yeah. So, um, I don't know. Does Chrome watch this? Is he a, I, I don't know. If I you're watching so. this, Chrome. What's up, Chrome? I, I got a little pickle, a little beef with Chrome. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Nothing big. So... Before the uh, whole um, four down experience, okay. Crum was supposed to be on my show. He was going to be like my first, like one of my first guests yeah, out yeah. there. Um, but I think he just got busy and just getting things, you know. And I kept texting. Him. I was like, "Hey man, you know the show's coming up. I'm going to play your video part from this. I'm going to play this song from your video part." That's so cool. I was like, "Let's come on, you know, like yeah. you can guest host and we talk about that. We can talk about the four down experience and all that." Yeah, yeah that'll be and, awesome. Uh, at first, he was like totally down for it. You know, he's cool. Like, yeah, yeah, we'll do that. Mm-hmm. Come on and. Yeah, I think he just got busy. It was just like, uh, he never responded. So it never happened. He never came on. Yeah. I was sad. But I did the episode anyway. Yeah. I played a bunch of stuff from his video parts, like throughout. Like, I played his 
from his old trans world part, and I played stuff from his old like world industries part. That's cool. From the uh, yeah, yeah. I played the song from his part when he was on Rodney versus Daylon. Yeah, like that part. Like and uh, and um, and I was like, ah, I'm just gonna play it anyway. And I talked about the four down experience, you know, promoting stuff like that. But Crummy, if you're watching, you're still owe me a show. <laughs> I'd love to have you on too, Crum. I'd, yeah, I'd love to have you come sit down, man. Yeah, That'd be sick. That would be awesome. That's and, uh, I didn't know he was supposed to be in the video game like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and again, this is what I've heard. This is yeah. what I've been told. It, 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 I don't know. Now that I say that, you know, I, I think it's true. I'm pretty sure it's true. But I mean, <laughs> an o, he's an OG up there, man. Mm-hmm. Why not? You know? Yeah, yeah. Crumb was really Crumb is really good for a skater. Like some of the stuff. Dude, he I was love killing watching this the, like the other day. The experience. He was yeah, killing I it. saw that footage. He yeah. does that nolly alley oop over the channel. <sighs> Dude, yeah, so and his funny. gnarly hill flips, yeah. like gnarly hill flip mute grabs. Mm-hmm. Does. Like, oh and he's God. up there doing plants like nothing. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. It, man. All in, all in old school chucks. Dude. Yeah, yeah. Dude, he's got <laughs> They're the, all like the duct, duct tape. tape and stuff. Fuck yeah, <laughs> dude. I've noticed that too. Hell yeah. I noticed that shit. That's hardcore. Uh, yeah, you know you're committed when you're taping your yeah. shit up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Mike's awesome, man. Shout out Mike Crown. Yeah, yeah. Mike Crown. Papa Crown. Yeah, yeah. What everybody calls him. <laughs> what, else uh, here? what else what else you know it's kind of funny too about crumb uh always run into people like when we we're doing stuff with skate straight yeah, yeah. a lot of skate straight skate straight stuff i've always had people run into me you know talk to me I'd, I'd be like out wearing a skate straight shirt or something and somebody's like yeah dude uh you know crumb tells me you know that i really need to check you guys out you know come and you know get some stuff and and Cameron uh, Sunshine, the guy that was on my show last, yeah, last night, that's last how night. we met. He said that to me. He came up to me, he's like, yeah, Crumb told me, you know, need to hit you guys up. Come on, skate straight, you know. Yeah. So, so Crumb, you know, he's he's out there, you know. He's really, really, uh, I guess a huge part and a really important part for, like, the local community. Right. As far as uh, even the skateboarding community. I mean, even just, so like, much for, for yeah, Dallas. the food project they do. Absolutely. Like, it's amazing what they do. So, yeah, yeah huge shout out to Crumb. You know, yeah, like, big shout out to Crumb. Yeah. And four down, the whole thing they got going on there. Man. Yeah. Five star, all y'all. y'all yeah. Y'all are absolutely. Out there, man. Yeah. Fuck yeah, dude. Something else I was going to ask you. <laughs> it'll come to me, though. <laughs> I don't remember. Probably when I leave, it'll come to me. Yeah, it'll be one of those things like, oh, yeah, that's what it was. Mm. Thank oh. you for the Liquid Debt, man. Absolutely, dude. Yeah, we're trying to get that sponsorship, you know. We put it yeah. in every video and tag them and everything. And I'm really about to send him an email though. After yeah, you should do it. Send yeah. an email. Liquid Death. It's I'm, refreshing, I'm like the, North Dakota. Straight Mountain Water. Is that a good commercial? Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. I shouldn't do too much for him. I have the face for radio. What they say. The yeah. face for. Radio. <laughs> 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 oh, that's funny. Oh, dude. Oh, I was trying to remember what the fuck it was. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> do you do you want to talk about space radio? Um, uh, <laughs> I mean, we can if you want, like, go there. Like, we, can edit all, we can edit it all out. You know, I mean, yeah, I mean, kind of bummed what happened. You yeah, know? I mean, like, really bummed. Um, so I, I got kind of it handed to me, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. and I would like to keep it going, yeah. I, I, I'm fuck with everything that stands for, yeah, absolutely, and, and I personally know people that enjoy yeah. it. And I'd like to keep it going, but everywhere that we talk to and everyone mm-hmm. that we talk to about it wants nothing to do with it. Well, I mean, all right, so I had two and a half years sober, mm-hmm. like about two and a half, a little over two and a half years, and I would not be here if it wasn't for Skate Street. Right. You know, I was a fucking train wreck before. You know, I was like drinking constantly, like I was a shut in. And that's kind of part of the reason, like, I didn't take off at first with like the skate wreck or the B dubs. Okay. Because I was too busy just. I completely shut everybody else out, and I stayed in my house and just stayed drunk all the time, you know? And then when I found Skate Straight, and uh, I was not at the first meeting because I was still drunk, but I was at the second meeting of Skate Straight, like at the very beginning. Okay. And so that's kind of what got me started. That's like what put me on my path, and I've stayed sober since, you know? Yeah, I think it, it's a great so, program. program. And hell, yeah. what, the original Skate Straight, what it was geared towards, was amazing. It was fucking great. It was amazing. Skate Straight was originally designed, put there for 
the skateboard community to help skateboarders and stuff like that the state's over and to quit drinking and stuff like that yeah and it seemed like it was a place yeah. where y'all could all come together exactly and talk and exactly and the first days of skate straight it was great it was amazing mm -hmm. But when it lost sight of that, when it kind of lost that, that's when shit started to fall apart, you know? Okay. So, you know, fast forward like a little bit further. On one hand, you think it's kind of cool because Skate Street started blowing up and then all these other people started coming in and started doing yeah. different things. Yoga was added and like all this shit. And then like all of a sudden it became this big fucking like clothing brand. Yeah. It started selling clothing yeah. and merch, which on one hand, it's kind of cool if you're selling shirts and stuff to kind of keep, you know, keep the finances going, keep rent going and stuff like that. But if you're not really paying rent, if you're not doing any of that and you're just making money from the clothes and it's using that money to make more clothes, that kind of kind of, kind of starts becoming yeah, kind of shitty, you know yeah. what I mean? Mm -hmm. And also it's kind of people are also kind of on the fence about like merchandise, selling merchandise for recovery programs. Because basically you're selling merchandise and you're geared toward people that are in a really, really fucked up, low, shitty point in their I, life. I get it. Yeah. So like, why are you trying to sell merch and trying to sell clothes to these people that are completely at the bottom of their? You know, I get it, but then you know, again, I'm like, it's branding. It it is. You it is branding, but it, I think it got out of control. You know. Yeah. Like selling a couple of shirts, sticker. You know, that's cool. But like, just trying to make a whole company. brand company out yeah. of it. That's not cool. I you know, that's that's kind of like going out of control. And so that's not really the big problem. Like I said, when, you know, people came in and they started doing the yoga, you know, and they actually it kind of slowly started to push out skateboarding and the skate stuff on it. I can see and that. it started kind of becoming this new, like, trendy soccer Hipster. mom recovery, yeah, dude. you know, yeah. stuff. That's the so that's kind problem. of when shit started going down. Yeah. Here. So the people that came in and person, people, that came in and started doing the yoga shit and started taking that over, it kind of just started to slide down and they wanted to get rid of the skating. Even like, because before with Skate Straight began, you know, we'd meet up from 10 to 12, right? From 10 to 11, we'd skate. 11 to 12, we'd do the meeting, you know, oh, do okay. the recovery. Yeah, yeah. Yoga came in, took over all that. <clears throat> they, were, they took over to 10 to 11 and it was all yoga, you know, all that stuff and nobody even skated. All the skateboarders and all the skaters even quit coming. It was like eventually it was not even like hardly any skaters. Well, I mean, it's skate straight, not yoga straight. I, yeah, you would think that, but I mean, on one hand, it did kind of blow up mm -hmm. and it got really big where we had to expand different meetings, different days, and stuff like that. Right, and it got right. did get really big and we were helping a lot of people. But the original intent, the original for skate straight, just kind of fell off to the side and it became this, like I said, hipster soccer mom like right. you know trendy another trendy PC. recovery thing yeah. and I mean you go out there and there's so many trendy recovery you know like the whole yoga meditation all that stuff right. it's, it's like kind of big you know it's the new hit trendy you know what I liked about Skate Street was how grimy it was yeah I, yeah. I, I, I mean liked, it kind of was uh, you know yeah, it was man. at that point I liked then, how in the street it was yeah yeah and then eventually it kind of got that got away from that mm -hmm. and even at one point they were talking about can we drop the name skate? Can we, you know, not use yeah, skate yeah, and all that? Yeah. And and then, you know, Kurt and I were like, you know, no, this is kind of what we started. This exactly. is skate street. And so it kind of fell off, you know, and things happen. A lot of bullshit drama happened. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna really get into yeah, the bullshit to, drama because I don't want to, you know, talk shit about people or yeah. throw, you know, throw people under a bus. But like, after all the bullshit drama happened, there was this huge fucking split, you know. And then one side was just kind of like fell off, and the other side. Is totally ran with the soccer mom, you know, fancy recovery shit. And they even changed the name. No so more skateboarding. That, so all that's still going. They still have a group going on. Well, not not, not now. It's oh, all okay. fucking gone. Right. <laughs> but so, for a while, this lasted for like a month. Yeah. You know, and like, and so Stev, you know, she was one of the original founders for Skate Street. Her and I kind of tried to keep it going. Mm -hmm. I and mean, I even tried to keep the skate stuff going because we had even another meeting at Alliance Skate Park yeah. and we had that four down. I tried to keep it going at Alliance, you know, we tried that. But then the other people that were doing the yoga and like all that stuff kind of pushed us out and kind of pushed us away. We're like, no, we're not doing that stuff. No more skate stuff. We're just doing the yoga, the Dharma, like meditation That's and all that. It's almost like you so, kicked out your own club. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, me and right. Steph were just like, y'all we're out yeah. and we just kind of her and I walked away and then it lasted I think a month or so mm -hmm. and then um, they were still going to four down but 
they were doing the four down and acting like they fucking ruled the place. Right. Like nobody even skated. It wasn't even about skateboarding anymore. Yeah. And they weren't helping out. They weren't volunteering. They weren't paying rent. They weren't doing anything. They were just showing up. A bunch of random people had keys. They were just showing up and acting like they ruled the place. And yeah. so eventually Crumb and four down were like, y'all got it. No, I mean, it's his space. Yeah. At, at the end yeah. of the day, it's his space. And, and they were complaining. They would have groups there and complaining like, oh, there's a bunch of people here drinking and skating and yeah, blah, blah, yeah. And, you know, we're trying to do a meeting and they're out skating. And I even kind of called them out. And I was like, no, that's a skate park, right? Yeah. I was like, you're a visitor. That's not your home. That's their home. Exactly. You're a visitor, so you have no kind of say in this. I see it both ways. Yeah. I get what they're saying, but then again, it is a yeah. skate park. It is. Yeah. And they're, they're, they don't own the place. They don't run the place. Yeah. And they're, they're not doing anything to contribute, you know? They weren't helping out. They weren't volunteering. They were doing nothing. And they were just like talking a lot of stuff to Crumb, like, oh, we'll do this, we'll do that, and then no follow through. Like the person that like started the whole thing and was like trying to take a thing over, wouldn't even like show up ever, and like was just in the back end trying to take over things. And so how do you expect anything to work? It didn't. Yeah. So it just kind of <laughs> fell apart and all that. So it's wild, man. So I've been on like the the outsides of it all, you know, and yeah. you know, I know Kurt through the meetings yeah. and stuff, and yeah, yeah. And he kind of do everything to me yeah. and said, do what you want to do with it, man. I mean, Kurt and I had a falling out yeah, you know, and all that stuff, good. but like if it wasn't for Kurt, I wouldn't be sober. I wouldn't be where I'm at for Kurt. Yeah. Like, I mean, I, I have nothing but love for that guy. You know, like as much that happened between us and all the stuff, like I still have nothing bad to say about the guy. You know, I love the guy. He was like a brother to me. You know, right. and he was like, he was my mentor. He helped me out. It really sucks what happened. Mm -hmm. I tried to squash it. I tried to... You know, I tried to make good. I tried to, okay. you know, even at one point, like, dude, we could squash it. We could make it right. Yeah. And it's just things were just too heated at the time and things were, you know, kind of crappy. And it sucks, man. It really does. And now, and now, I mean, I mean, I'm still sober. I'm not drinking, but I'm not in recovery anymore. I'm not in part. I'm kind of, to be honest, you know, I'm kind of fuck recovery. <laughs> I'm kind of like anti-recovery. I'm like, fuck all that. Because they're yeah. like, it's a, from what my experience, you know, it's just a bunch of, People that need attention and a bunch of fucking drama filled bullshit. Kind of. So I just kinda. I don't want to drink because there, I don't want to drink. Yeah, yeah, there are like, people there genuinely looking for some help. Yeah. But, yeah. but seventy percent of them are just there bitching. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah, yeah, and a bunch of people that need attention and need mm -hmm. friends and like you know they need that. I mean, some people might need that group and need that to stay sober and all that. Like, and I mean, not to be a dick, but I'm not one of those. Hey, I don't want to drink. Rightfully so. I mean, if you know, yeah. you know, you know. Yeah, if you don't yeah. need it, you don't need it. Yeah, yeah. Straight up. Well, shit, man, this has been awesome. You, you got anything you want to plug? Do you want to um, shout anything out? Um, shout out to Red F Skateboards. Uh, my boy Brandon from Red F Skateboards, you know, could have done a lot of things without him. Oh, yeah. Uh, a good friend, Brian, Brian Wilson. He's, you know, a good friend. He grew up with us, too. He's helped me out a lot. Been on the show a couple of times in the beginning with me. Okay. You know? He's always supported me in club distribution. You know, we have Happy Wheel Supply, Thief Trucks. Um, yep, yep, yep. FFC skateboards, Terminal Four skateboards. You know, Thieves. we have all that. You know, right club distribution. Some e dubs. Yeah. So, and we're just kind of going big and like expanding yeah, on yeah. that. So, Kid Push Radio, everybody. Yeah. And uh, everybody from K N O N, Dave and Christian from K N O N, like giving me a shot. And, like my little sister Jamie Brain. I yeah, yeah. Her out. You know, wouldn't be there if it wasn't for them. My kids, Jude and Presley, you know, my yeah, mom, my sister, my older sister, Keisha. Yeah, like, you know, I wouldn't be where I am without any of them. You know, awesome, man. Love it. Yeah. Awesome. Hey, y'all check this out. k and Wayne, Kick Push Radio, Eat Up Skate Co., Wax, get you a sixer, pick up yeah. your bearings. <laughs> <laughs> hey, y'all take it easy. We're going to be you. Oh, We're going to yeah. be us. What you Next got? month. July, you guys are going to be on our show. I didn't, know if, you want, I didn't know if you wanted to mention yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, we yeah, yeah, we yeah, can't okay. leave that out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, you guys, I want you and Jake to come on the show. Absolutely. Like, absolutely. Uh, August yeah. 1st, right? Uh, August 1st, right, right. Yeah, yeah. so y'all send me so your favorite skate videos and your part. We'll play music from that, you know, and we'll talk oh, about yeah. that. And, um, you oh, know, yeah. we'll play some music and talk about skateboarding and all that. So August 1st, don't miss that. Can't win now. Yeah, yeah, I'll be on. Y'all look after that. It's going to be fun. real fun. Yeah. All right, guys. For sure. Later. That was sick, dude. Yeah. That was right at an hour, too. Uh, was it? Yeah, that's a good It didn't show. feel like it. felt like it was like 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the time gets away from you. No, I thought it was a little bit shorter than that. It was tight. Yeah. Right on. Cool.
Dude, dude, that concrete's been fucking on my knees. My yeah. knees, my knees been getting stiff. <laughs> Yeah, the chair is super comfy. I like that. It's like the big throne. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad this stream actually worked. Man, I uh, I had a guy on here Monday.